you can pretty much expect that your voice is going to be at least somewhat worse after the session because I mean, you can learn how to scream properly and, and, and in a way that is healthier, but at the end of the day, it's still going to cause vocal fatigue if you do it for long enough. Um, but uh, I was doing the very last couple of episodes for Kalifla and Kefla, and I don't want to give too much away. I know that it's already out in the Japanese. Um, but I know that there are some people that are, are not watching the sub and are only watching the dub. But um... What an awesome guest today we have, Elizabeth Maxwell, who is a voice actress for a lot of anime. You may know her from Dragon Ball Super. You may know her from My Hero Academia. Uh, you may know her from Overlord, uh, Fruits Baskets. Um, a lot of different stuff. Um, video game voice actress. We're talking about Persona. Legends of Breath of the Wild, we're talking about, you know, Just Cause 4, and what a great personality. Uh, I had an awesome time doing this interview, and I just, I learned a lot, and I hope you guys enjoy this interview, and make sure you follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, find this Millennial Nerds page on Facebook, and if you want to be a Patreon, make sure that you go to Patreon slash Millennial Nerds, where you can get episodes up to two days early for just a dollar right now for a limited time and there's other tiers there you can earn a lot of great stuff with and then of course we want to give a shout out to our producer today mr tony petrie tony i hope you're having a great great day this interview is for you sir without further ado let's get to it before we get started what are you doing june 22nd and june 23rd if the answer is ocala comic-con you are 100 percent correct join the ocala comic-con team this year for the biggest show they've done yet They've got a lot of great guests lined up for you. You can check them out on ocalacomicon.com. Uh, some of the guests I'm excited to see are Justin Cook from Yu Haka Show, Elizabeth Maxwell from Dragon Ball Super, and then I'm excited to meet the uh, Man Brothers, Clay Man and Seth Man, who do a lot of great comic book work. And there's a lot of other great guests as well. And you can join the after party with Drake Bell and get VIP access to that as well. Um, really, really awesome stuff. OcalaComicCon.com for more information. You can find them on Facebook as well. And they are a great, great partner of this particular show. And we have a lot more information to come soon. So thank you guys. Welcome to Millennial Nerds, and we have an awesome guest today. As you could tell from the intro, we have, I don't know if you've actually heard of her or not. You should have. Uh, I don't see why you wouldn't have, especially if you were a fan of anything like, I don't know, Dragon Ball Super. Uh, we have Elizabeth Maxwell, <laughs> uh, and she is gracing us with her presence today. Elizabeth, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. Better than I was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. For those of you that don't know, uh, and if you don't follow Elizabeth on Twitter, she put out a, a post the other day, and I think it's gotten, like, how many views? It's crazy. Uh, I think it's been retweeted so many oh, times. I haven't even checked. <laughs> oh, it's insane. Like, because I, I, I watched her when you first posted it, and it was probably anywhere between, you know, like a couple hundred views, and then I watched it the previous day after we treated it, and wow, holy crap. It, uh, it was, like, I think at 28,000 views last time I checked. It was, uh, oh goodness. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people. So, um, you've, if, for those of you who didn't watch it, you need to watch it because that, that, that shows me a lot of things and that shows a lot of people a lot of things too. So kind of go back to that. So you, you wore your voice, you, you, you wore your uh, voice out pretty much. And then that's a normal day for you, right? Uh, yes and no, that session was a little extra special, um, I mean, basically any time that you do Dragon Ball Super, um, unless you're, you know, one of the few characters that don't fight and don't scream, um, like uh, Vados <laughs> or Whis, um, you can pretty much expect that your voice is going to be at least somewhat worse after the session. Because, I mean, you can learn how to scream properly and, and, and in a way that is healthier but at the end of the day, it's still going to cause vocal fatigue if you do it for long enough. Um, but uh, I was doing the very last couple of episodes 
for cauliflora and kefla. And I don't want to give too much away. I know that it's already out in the Japanese, um, but I know that there are some people that are, are not watching the sub and are only watching the dub. But um, I'll just say it's a really intense fight. <laughs> it's more intense than anything I have ever done. And that's saying a lot. Yeah, uh, <laughs> definitely. So it was um, a friend of mine texted me uh, and said that I looked like um, an athlete who had just like ran a really long <laughs> marathon and crossed the finish line. And I was like, that is exactly how I feel. Like I feel so exhausted but really elated at the same time. I was going to say <laughs> that there's also some emotion there too, though. So what, what like, and that that's like a big overall question to have. So what's it like working on Dragon Ball Super? I don't really know what to compare it to, to be perfectly honest. And I think that's one of the reasons why it is so special. Like to me, Dragon Ball is kind of like the OG anime with the capital. Tea. You know, it's like, I feel like literally you can act like with maybe the exception of Pokemon, I feel like you can ask almost anyone in the world if they watch anime or if they know what anime is. And even if the answer is no, if you were to say like, hey, well, have you heard of Dragon Ball? They probably have heard of that. Um, it's just so iconic and so legendary. And um it's just kind of one of those properties that I never actually thought that I would be involved in. It just seemed like so beyond the realm of what I could expect to achieve in my career. <laughs> um, and then on top of that, to not only get the chance to be a part of it, but to step into the series as a character that to me was, really along with kale was really important because it really to me was the the beginning of some beautiful female you know inclusion in dragon ball that we hadn't seen quite as much before um and also the fact that i was kind of warned before i stepped into this role that these two characters are really um that they're really controversial among a lot of the fandom. And so there was a lot swirling around in my head, like walking into the series and into this role. And um, it ended up just exceeding my expectations in every way imaginable. Like the, like the actual work of it was so fun. Um, I ended up really resonating with that character more than I thought I would and having so much fun with her and the collaborative experience that I had working with Raleigh Pickens, who's the director, was so fulfilling. Um, he really, Okratron has a lot of luxury to take their time with Dragon Ball, with the dubbing of Dragon Ball, um, that we don't always get that time with all the simul dubs we work on. Um, so there's a bit more care taken. Um, Raleigh is really invested in us feeling ownership over the character. And we're allowed, like, we're, we're welcomed to, like, stop and say, like, hey, I don't think my character would say this. Or I don't think that she would say it this way. And then we talk about it. And we have a discussion and a conversation and you know we figure out like okay well how do we best honor the translation and my instincts as an actor you know and my relationship with the character so that was incredibly fulfilling i'm sorry i feel like i'm just like talk 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 talking oh no you're fine <laughs> you're, you're answering questions as i go along <laughs> you're perfectly yeah. fine and then um and then the response from the dragon ball community was just so over and above what I even hoped or expected. And I know that's not to say that, like, I changed everybody's minds about the characters. I know that there are still people out there that don't particularly like the characters, which is totally fine. 
But, um, you know, it was kind of like anybody that had anything negative to say was generally very civil or just didn't include me in the conversations. They like left me out of it. And, um, the fans that were into it were just so welcoming and so enthusiastic. And the response was just so positive. And I mean, it was really nice. Like I uh, really, um, I don't know quite what the word is, but I mean, I, I have had several people come out and kind of be like, Hey, I didn't initially like the character, but when I heard your voice and when I heard your take on her and how you chose to portray her, it kind of brought, like it changed my mind, right. brought me around. And that was, you know, that's pretty awesome to hear. Oh, yeah. Um, when you're, when you're able to change somebody's mind like that, like, cause like my, my initial thing with Dragon Ball Super and maybe why a lot of people didn't like, maybe like the character at first is I don't think a lot of those people like Dragon Ball Super, to be quite honest. That's what I get right. a lot from like the, cause you have your die hard and, and you're hundred percent right. In the world of anime, there is nothing bigger than Dragon Ball. There's nothing bigger than, you know, Dragon Ball and Pokemon. You put them right there next to each other and like you were 100% right. So there's a lot of people that feel, you know, like I, I'm one of them. You know, I've been watching, I was watching Dragon Ball Z, I think was when it was a ran on Fox before it was even ran on Cartoon <laughs> Network. Um, so, and that was my, you know, first, you know, inclination of it. And then you know, I grew up with that series. So I, I was hesitant on Dragon Ball uh, Super at first, but then. When, when you see that it harkens back to kind of like a Dragon Ball days, more than so Dragon Ball Z days, where it, it focuses a lot on humor, it focuses a lot on, you know, character development rather than just the fights themselves. And mm -hmm. when, when I heard your voice, at, you know, as a character, I was, I was like, that's exactly what you would think she would sound like, which that doesn't happen often. I, I mind you, there, there's a few, there's a few like times you listen to a voice and, you know, especially with dubs, cause dubs, like you, you got to put up a lot of stuff from people because a lot of people go, Oh no, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to the dub because the, the, the voice actresses or voice actors are terrible. And, and there are some out there, there are some dubs out there that were not up to par with what people were anticipating. But one thing I've noticed about this particular role for you in just reading the, the fan um, the fan service and then all, all the comments and everything like that. There are people that may not like the show, but they totally love your character. And <laughs> that's, and, and it's funny because like, first off, you're hundred percent right. This, this role was huge because you are technically playing the first female super saiyan. And right. that in itself is, is, is to me is monumental because if, if you would have told you would have told me in 2005 or whatever female Super Saiyan, you would have think you know Pam, but like the, the, they were always treated as like secondary characters. They weren't given their main screen time like uh, like your character was given. So, and then it's interesting to hear from a behind the scenes standpoint that because this is something that a lot of people like don't maybe know is that you are actually given more control over your character than what people initially think you are. Some people just think you're in there reading lines, but it's interesting to know that you're actually in there because you can tell. That you've given her like that spunkiness, that 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 just that characterization, and a lot of it is probably because you play you play a lot of different roles, but that mm -hmm. particular role is that one is that one closer to how you are, like in real life? <laughs> I mean, I yes and no. Um, I was definitely like when I was younger. A kind of like fearless tomboy who would basically spout off anything that was on my brain. Um, but I would say that in real life, I am definitely not as aggressive as <laughs> Kalifla is. Um, I, as I've gotten a bit older, I've kind of, uh, my personality has changed it a little bit and I kind of like sitting back and like letting other people take the stage a bit more. Um, and I also think that I'm quite a bit, uh, I, I think before I speak quite a bit more now in my adulthood. Um, but I definitely resonate with a lot of her mannerisms and her personality. And it is not a stretch for me to see the world through her eyes, if that makes sense. Oh, that makes perfect sense. So, and then 
I mean, we, we we look at Dragon Ball, right? So it, it obviously, and you can tell, like I said, go watch that Twitter video. It, it that just to me, like when you see actors in their moment. Like after they have done something like that, and then you send that message to fans. I I, I want to thank you on behalf of pretty much all the Dragon Ball fans out there for just being like just being a badass. First off, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. You're welcome. But yeah, so and, and then obviously Dragon Ball is not what you only do because it's funny because I asked a lot of the I asked a lot of listeners to this podcast. I was like, so what do you guys know Elizabeth Maxwell from? And of course, My Hero Academia came up, Dragon Ball came up. You know, and then, but the number one thing that came up was Albedo from Overlord. Like, really? That what? Yeah, like, because I've never actually watched Overlord. I'm gonna have to now. But like, it was funny because like all of a sudden, like I just kept getting responses like, yeah, yeah, Overlord, Overlord is my favorite. Like, I love her from Overlord. And I'm like, okay, like it's something I never heard of. But all of a sudden, like, it just kind of clicked with me that like those are that's a hardcore, you know, maybe maybe not well as well known anime, but those fans right there are fans that just are following you pretty much through whatever you do. So it's interesting when you look at your career, because you're not just a voice actress, right? Correct. Because uh, I've seen, uh, was it Virgin Cheerleaders and Chains? Is that, <laughs> is that what <laughs> That's it is? That's the one. That's the one, right? <laughs> so yeah. there, there's, a, there's a few of them, too, because you had a guest spot in Little Woods as well. Mm-hmm. Um, where you, uh, and I, if you, uh, check out, uh, about Elizabeth Maxwell.com for uh, all of her, uh, she's got a lot of great, uh, intro in there. And if you want to see the person behind the voice, cause it's, it's, it's interesting when I, it's hard sometimes to separate the voice actor from the actor, but you do a damn good job of making me, okay. Cause when I first heard it, cause it, the scene that you have on about, uh, about Elizabeth, uh, with, uh, on Little Woods, like I first I heard, I was like, oh, that's uh, Khalifa. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, wait, no, <laughs> this is totally different. Okay. So I, I, I commend you for that. So how much different is it from doing a live action to voice acting? Oh, man, it's so I'm not going to say that they're not complimentary because they absolutely are. But they're so different for me. Um, and I think that any actor that you ask will give you a different answer. Um, but it's, it's, it's like, to me, they're almost complete opposite. Um, when you're doing voiceover, because you only are utilizing one part of your instrument, just your voice, you have to put so much into that, that sometimes you can have like a, a paranoia that you might be overacting. And usually you're not. Like you have to go further with the emotions in VO than you might on TV or movies because when you're doing on camera work, the camera picks up every tiny, tiny little subtle twitch in your face. So with on camera work, it's like you have to dial, or at least I do because I am very expressive in real life. I talk with my hands all the time. My face is constantly moving. My body is constantly moving. So when I'm on camera, I have to really remind myself to dial everything back to like a really low volume setting (laughs) Um, or else it just comes across too much on camera. Uh, So in that respect, I find the experiences almost like polar opposites. And um, artistically, it's, it's really interesting, too, because. On, you know, with the exception of obviously some character roles where they put, you know, crazy amounts of makeup or prosthetics on you, you know, you are playing a character that is believably you. Whereas in VO, I am limited only to what I can make my voice sound like. So I can play, you know, different ages, different genders, different species, (laughs) you know? Yeah. So... Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty worlds apart for me. Yeah. And that's, and that's, you know, I've talked to some voice actors before who have, who've, who've dived into uh, film and television and things like that. And like a lot of the people have that misconception, at least from who I've talked to, that voice acting is almost something that like anybody can do, but that is far from the truth. Cause you can't just pick up a microphone and go, Oh, Hey, I'm going to be a voice actor today. No, you have got to put a lot of hard work and effort into it. And you can tell the difference between, like I said, that there's, there's been some dubs out there, you know, or even just regular, cause you don't just do anime. You do, you know, you do things. I think you, uh, uh, you partner up with a lot of, uh, 
a lot of um, people. I think Rooster Teeth is one of your big ones that you partner up with too, um, where I think mm-hmm. you play yeah. at what in Camp Camp, and then Camp Camp, yep. Yeah. I'm in Ruby. Yep. So, and then there's the other thing that a lot of people may not realize you do is you do video games as well. Yes. So what's yeah. the difference? Cause you did, cause you worked on breath of the wild and you worked on, you know, persona and things like that. So what's the difference between, you know, voice acting? Cause like I said, it's voice acting, but did you, do you do motion capture as well for video games or like what, what have you had I, to do differently? I do. Um, although funny enough, um, because, of, of the style of the game. Um, I didn't do any motion capture for either Zelda or Persona 5. Um, but I was in a, a video game called Just Cause 4 that oh, yeah. came out last year. Yep. And that we did full performance capture for. So not only were we doing motion capture, but we were also doing facial capture and capturing audio while we were doing like the mocap and the the facial capture. Uh, So that's kind of a crazy experience all to itself. Um, To me, I've actually heard people refer to motion capture as one of the purest forms of acting. And I didn't fully understand what they meant until I did it myself. And I think that they say that because you are literally having to completely construct everything in the scene except for your scene partners with your imagination <laughs> oh that's that's so, gonna be intense yeah yeah so you know when you're doing a film or a tv show uh you don't have to imagine your surroundings unless you're doing green screen i suppose uh whereas when you're doing performance capture you know you are in an enormous empty space you may have different blocks being used to show you, oh, there's a bench here, there's a building here. Um, Occasionally, you get the benefit of like, I think there was one scene in Just Cause 4 where um, we were having to watch like a helicopter get uh, torpedoed and then crash to the ground. And they basically used like a tennis ball on a really long stick to signify the <laughs> helicopter. They were like weaving that around and then crashing it to the ground. So we had something to focus our eyes on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's totally everything comes from your imagination and you're having to en- envision and create in your brain these very realistic environments and circumstances. Um, And another interesting thing about video games, too, is that a lot of times uh, you're having to you're having to uh, give the player a lot of exposition and you've got to find a way (laughs) to make this kind of like dry quest giving or information interesting. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) Um, So that's always one of the Killer challenges of, of vi- video game VO um, that makes me laugh that, that you usually don't have to deal with in quite the same way in any other form of VO. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's that's pretty that's pretty hilarious because like that's got to come off like sometimes like you're just you can't be monotone while you do it, but at the same time it's like here let me give you this quest line, yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so one of the things that uh, i really uh really enjoy uh what you do is you you're a huge uh fan of your fans like you you you're very much in you you, go, you attend a lot of cons and you're actually attending as you don't know you're attending a local con that's right near me the ocala comic con uh here very very soon and yeah yeah i know it's exciting right i'm gonna be there so it's it's pretty cool that like what's it like from Cause like you, you've been acting for, for what, almost 10 years now? Yeah. Well, actually let's see. Uh, VO I've been doing for about five years professionally mm-hmm. and on camera work a bit over 10 years. Yeah. Okay. So what's it like from like, cause your, your, your career, your career is growing now. Like, and I think you're at the point right now where you can almost do pretty much like you could do you can do more like you're going to do more obviously. And like, you're not just stopping with like, you know, you just moved on with dragon ball super and things like that. And then like just watching, 
watching you jump from here to here to here to here. Because like you've worked with DC before on DC Universe, you've worked with what Marvel before, you've worked with all like these top brand name companies, and your your, your stock's rising, obviously. But one thing that you're <laughs> you're not doing is you're not forgetting about like in particular, hey, doing this doing this podcast with me. Is you're giving back to fans, and to me, that's one of the most important things that people tend to forget about whenever they get into you know higher roles and things like that. So what's it like when you go to when you go to cons? Because like I see you post pictures all the time of the people that are you know cosplaying as you and things like that. Tell me, tell me what, what that feeling is like. Is, is that probably one of your favorite parts about what you do now or, or, or how does that? Oh, 100%. Um, I mean, I started out as a fan, you know, I was, <laughs> I played video games and watched anime and was a huge nerd before I got into this professionally. So. And that you know, right there, 100% a, I, credit I, given to you. Good job. Awesome. The <laughs> fact that you didn't just like waltz into this going, oh, I'm a star. No, you you you, you grew up in this culture and then and now you, you are who you are. So yeah, continue. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I was just going to say that it's like, you know, being being on the other side is, is, is a feeling that is not that far away from where I am now. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a lot of things that go into the job. I have to be prepared. I have to do a good job. I have to be given the opportunity to get the role. I have to earn the role. Um, The show has to do well. But, you know, so much of what we do is not only for the fans, but it's made possible by the fans. You know, I I wouldn't get to go to as many conventions. I, I wouldn't, you know, these shows wouldn't be doing as well as they are if we didn't have the incredibly passionate and supportive fan bases that we do for them. And so to me, there's no more important person to, to appreciate and pay homage to than the fan. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, it's like, I do think that as voice actors and specifically, you know, that we do a lot of anime dubbing and video game work. Like we are so lucky that we get to, you know, meet the fans in ways that, you know, a lot of, of other actors don't get the opportunity to. And to me, it's, it's very fulfilling, you know, to, to see somebody come forward to your table and whether, you know, they're cosplaying as a character you've played or they have a crazy collection or they just, you can see the sparkle in their eyes that they're as passionate about the character or the property as you are. Like it's a pretty special feeling and a pretty special relationship to have with somebody. Um, so yeah, it's like, it just, it doesn't get old. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things too. And maybe you can comment on this too is so, cause like I'll give, I'll give our little local comic con uh, an example. So the Akala comic con, I think it started, I think it's been going on for quite a few years, but it used to be just a little table. <laughs> set up <laughs> where you know a couple of the local local you know nerds geeks and everything like that pretty much all of us we would we would just go there and then you would just chit chat and you would just talk about the things that you liked and all of a sudden uh somebody else actually you know somebody else told somebody else somebody else told somebody else and you know the, these these conventions get bigger and they get bigger and bigger every year and it, it's funny because like every year is like hey this is our biggest one yeah this is our biggest one yet yeah, this culture is growing like, and it's mm-hmm. growing from a, 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 to me, exponentially, because the the popular thing now is to be a nerd, I guess, essentially, whereas in, <laughs> whereas in school, we were always, you know, the outcasts and things like that. Or we always had our little table of people where we would just talk about Dungeons and Dragons. We would talk about anime. We would talk about, you know, Pokemon trading cards. We would trade our Yu-Gi-Oh cards at the table. We, we would do things like that. But like, and it, now all of a sudden, now... Because of things like, you know, and I, I hate Fortnite, but I get Fortnite credit because it brings in a lot of other people to uh, to this particular culture. And then you get a lot of people at these conventions who, you know, are we have the captain of a football team who is, you know, who's uh, cosplaying um, as, uh, you know, as one of your characters or as Goku. You know what I mean? Like, and it's just <laughs> weird. Like, like, so like. How, how has it grown for you? Like, so like you, you talk about the fan and things like that, but like, have you have you noticed that trend, though? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm right there with you in the sense that when I was little and I was in, you know, grade school and stuff, I was not cool or popular. (laughs) Like, you know, I was, you know, thankfully, I was made fun of, but not, you know, severely. Um, But yeah, it's like, I was a 
huge fantasy book nerd. Like I gobbled up fantasy series and I had very few people to talk to it, talk to about it. And part of that was because it wasn't cool. Um, it hadn't entered the mainstream culture. And honestly, I think a huge part of it, like, is the internet, you know? Oh yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Like the, the, the internet has allowed us access to a worldwide community of people who share the same weird specific interests as you. Um, but, and, and I also like, you know, things like, you know, Crunchyroll and Funimation, like I got my anime totally bootlegged when I was <laughs> 10 years old. 100%. You know, my brother belonged to the anime club at his high school and I don't know how they got the anime that they did, but for a number of years, the, like my anime taste was controlled entirely by my brother because all I really had access to was tapes that he would bring home from anime club. Were these, were these, <laughs> were these actual tapes? These were actual oh, VHS man. tapes. Damn. Oh yeah. Okay. One hundred percent. I think you got me beat. I think you got me beat because like I, I I didn't like really start like because YouTube was my big experience when it came to bootlegging anime because when YouTube was the first initially there wasn't any control for YouTube so that's how mm -hmm. I ingested all my stuff. But man, VHS. Wow, that's a yeah. <laughs> VHS anime bootlegging over here. That's that's pretty impressive. That's a uh, very very impressive. But yeah, so, it, uh, and it, it's cool that the culture like that, like you said, it has grown. So when we talk about how, you know, you're, you're a nerd, you're a fan, you were, you know, big into fantasy and things like that. Do you still have time to do those things or does your schedule just keep you, just keep you busy? Or have you had to change kind of like what your hobbies and interests are? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> um, I do tell people sometimes like the only, the only like bad thing, quote unquote, about my job is that I feel like the more that I do VO professionally, the less time that I do have to engage in the content as a fan. Um, it is a full-time job and particularly pursuing on-camera work and voiceover is like having two full-time jobs. Oh, yeah. They're very, they're very different fields and they require very different kinds of uh, work and marketing and so forth. Um so a lot of times my, uh, the, the time that the, the small amount of time that I do have is limited to either doing research for upcoming projects or because I want to watch a property that I've been involved in so that I can more, uh, eloquently and in, you know, speak about it. <laughs> Right. Because, you know, when you're when you're dubbing an anime and you're not like the main character, you don't necessarily see a lot of the episode. So you get very kind of limited uh, insights into the storyline. And if you want to know fully what's going on, you have to watch it when it's finished. <laughs> right. Uh, and also, I travel so much that... Of late, uh, most of the games that I've been able to play have all been limited to what's on the Switch. <laughs> oh, there you <laughs> because, go, Switch fans. Because, yeah, <laughs> um, which which I love the Switch, but it also makes me just a little bit sad because my copy of Persona Five has just been languishing on the shelf. Oh yeah, because yeah, yeah. I haven't I haven't had time to boot up my P4. Um, but you know, that being said, I still do find. Uh, sometime it just is hard um, and I do still love to read so I try and devote you know at least a chunk of my free time to keeping up on you know series and books that I've got on my wish list or you know series I'm following so we'll 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 uh We'll, we'll, we'll cut this, uh, we'll cut this interview so that way you can have more, have a little bit, maybe some of that free time back today. Hopefully you can. Well, the, 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 the <laughs> couple things I do want to ask real quick though is one, what is your absolute favorite anime of all time? Oh God. Uh, I know. Yeah. God. I know. That's like impossible to answer. Yeah. Well, uh, what about the favorite one you've worked on though, at least? Is it is it going to be Dragon Ball Super even, or is it even more impossible to answer? <laughs> um, I will answer, but I'm going to give you a couple. All right, that's fine. I can't Go give ahead. you just one. That's fine. Um, 
I am in love with Fruits Basket right now, which is an anime I'm currently working on mm -hmm. uh, because it's so outside of anything that I have ever watched. It or is very really much so. been involved yes. with before. Um, and it's just so charming and so emotional. I have been eating it up with a spoon. Um, Dragon Ball is legendary. I don't know if anything will ever quite be able to top that. <laughs> and then there is another anime. It's a little bit older, but whenever people ask me for recommendations, I always tell them to go check out Noragami. Um, it's a show I worked on a couple of years ago. I play the main, anta uh, the main antagonist, Beast Bone. And uh, that also, for me, was a really special, really incredible uh, show that, like, really deftly combines humor with really intense, real emotion. And the music, the, the, the animation, the characters, like, everything is just A+. Plus. And if I got, you know, three wishes from a genie lamp, <laughs> one of them would be for Noragami season three. <laughs> oh. so. Wow. I'll definitely have to check that out. So uh, real quick, I just want to give you a chance to, uh, where, where, where are you, where are you going to be next? So you are heading uh, overseas again? Yeah. Yeah. I actually, uh, this up, sorry, not this weekend, but next weekend, uh, I'm going to be in Rotterdam um, at AnimeCon Netherlands, which I'm super stoked for. Um, I love that country. And and then the following weekend, I will hopefully be meeting you and everybody else at Ocala Comic Con. Oh yeah, it's uh, it, it's an interesting group of people here, definitely, uh, and and they're very very excited to to see you because uh, I mentioned it. I mentioned to work to the as like, hey, I have a, I have Elizabeth Maxwell on the show, and I got so many people. Like the first initial initial thinking, and this is. I guess people still don't know what technology is, but the first thing is, well, can you get a, can you get me an autograph? I said, well, it's gonna be <laughs> over over Discord, and they're like, oh, I'm like, but you can go see her at Cali Comic Con. So you know, hey, salesman pitch for you. So yeah, uh, I want to I want to thank you uh, for being on this show, and I want to thank you for what you do. Uh, and then you know, any any last words that you have? Um, gosh, I. Uh Thanks for having me. Um, I, I am very much looking forward to Ocala. And um, I guess for anybody listening that can't make it to Ocala, um, please find me on social media. As you mentioned, I absolutely love connecting with and interacting with like-minded fellow nerds. And um, I'm typically, um, my Facebook, I don't really keep up on that much. So I recommend uh, finding me on Instagram where I'm just Elizabeth Maxwell. Or on Twitter, my handle is about Elizabeth M. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Scott. I'll see you soon. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that interview. I know I did. It was awesome to conduct. Awesome to hear those uh, answers to those questions that I asked. And then just overall, just it's great to hear from somebody who's such a fan of the industry that's in the industry now. So... Big shout out to Elizabeth Maxwell. I wish her all the best for everything that she's working on currently right now. And I can't wait to meet her this weekend at Ocala Comic Con. And guys, make sure that if she comes anywhere near you, you go out and meet her because she is the real deal. So thank you guys again. And I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. And I remember, respond to me about that E3 question I have for you guys, please. And then just give me some more feedback on this show. Guys, thank you for listening to another episode of the Millennial Nerds Podcast. If you want to listen to it the way I do, though, you're going to download the PodCoin app. The PodCoin app is available through the App Store. It's available through the Google Play Store. PodCoin, P-O-D-C-O-I-N, PodCoin app. You get paid to listen to podcasts. You're going to listen to this podcast anyway, so why as well get paid to listen to it, right? So you're going to get PodCoin. Use that PodCoin to buy yourself gift cards through, I don't know, places like Amazon. Or places like Starbucks. Get yourself some coffee. Get some coffee. Listen to a podcast on the way here. It's an awesome treat. It's an awesome treat for you just for listening to podcasts. Or you can do the thing that I do and you donate to charity. There's awesome, awesome uh, donations to charity on there. And you might as well take part in it now. Remember, that's PodCoin on the App Store or the Google Play Store. PodCoin app. Get it now. Gone.